Cooking this pig was so much fun. There's one thing though that I didn't tell anyone. Kind of like the secret. This skin is delicious, especially the pieces that are like got crackly and crunchy. Mm. Some of you are jealous right now and some of you are like, that is the grossest thing I've ever seen. She was talking about making a barbecue sandwich, is that right? Yeah. How's your barbecue sandwich, Joy? Really good. Really good? So what is the secret that I kept from 100 people and didn't tell them and fed them this pig? The secret is that the pig that we cooked this last Saturday, he was not castrated. He was a boar. And we cooked him right down here, and um, he tasted great. He tasted really good. It's a special occasion. Heart girth squared times the length divided by 400. All of that in inches equals the weight, approximate weight of a hog. Watch out, here I come. Watch out, Buster. Yeah. Yeah. All right, buddy. Be nice. It's time, just for fun, to try to measure our big boar and approximate how much he weighs using this incredible formula. So that was a little bit of a letdown. Maybe for you, not so much for me. But I'm not gonna push his buttons too much in there. I think the mistake I might have made is uh, trying to do this in this pen where he feels confined. We'll save that one for another day. Those pigs didn't come to us completely tame. None of these pigs in here, the males, are castrated. And this was a kind of a big decision for me because I've always thought that pigs needed to be castrated. I've always read they needed to be castrated. That's what everyone's doing is castrating their pigs. It felt like a gamble because I feel like I'd kind of been, uh, everything I'd learned so far had said one thing and then I started reading and finding this alternative view of things. One of the best resources I've found so far on this topic is two different um, blog posts from the website of Sugar Mountain Farm, which is, I think it's in Vermont. I'm gonna link both of these, these uh, articles or blog posts in the description of this video. That's one of my apple trees. I lost my first apple tree to um, borers, and this is a super um, destructive apple tree pest. Um, it could just take out a young tree. I didn't think that we actually had as a big problem with them around here, but apparently we do. If you look at the very end of this, um, you'll see that there's actually these tunnels that go up into it. There's one on top right here that's easily visible, and they just remove so much material that they end up weakening and killing the tree. And then what happened with this one is that it then was weakened to the point that it broke. So really the primary way to manage them is to check every single tree regularly and look for a site where there's a little bit of um, wood coming out of a hole, a hole with kind of a pithy exudate or um, sawdust mix that they've chewed up and spit out behind them. Another important thing with the, these borers is to keep the, um, the base of your tree clear from weeds. Um, but really the only thing you can do is find where they've gone in and then cut them out with a sharp tool. One tree down, we'll have to replant that one. I'm up here with these younger pigs in the garden. They're up here with their mom, our sow. There's a couple reasons people castrate their pigs. 
Boar taint is one of them. Aggression is another. And then really the other reason is people's perception of an uncastrated pig. A lot of people don't want to buy an uncastrated piglet and might not want to eat the meat from a boar. First of all, what is boar taint? Boar taint is an unpleasant taste that exists in some boars, intact male pigs. Um, it's present in about 10% of mature boars and it smells really bad. The meat will have a terrible smell. It's mostly a smell um, and it can be, when it's strong, it can be to the point that you cannot eat the meat. I'll be planting winter rye in here just because I know it's, it's pretty late in the season and I know it's a reliable cover crop planted nearly any time. So unquestionably, boar taint is real and present in some boars. The thing is that when you read people who have experimented with not castrating their herd of pigs, and when you read studies, and there are studies out there that look at the necessity of castration, you'll find that in most pigs that um, it's not necessary to castrate them if you butcher them when they're less than um, eight months old. There's, there's um, genetic factors, feed factors, and the environment factors. Genetically, some pigs like the Duroc Dur are more um, prone to it, and then some, uh, like the Yorkshire, are less prone to it. What everyone says about American guinea hogs, at least the people who are big fans of them, say that they're less likely to have boar taint. The reason I started looking into this was because while I don't mind castrating animals, I don't think that pain necessarily um, equates with suffering. I do think that if you can raise your animals and avoid what is a painful procedure for them, then why not? I'm no expert on this. If you're really interested in learning more, go down to the Sugar Mountain blog and read these two articles. I think you're gonna find them fascinating and informative. I was pretty confident going into this barbecue, but the funny thing is I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really have a backup plan if the pig was inedible with boar taint. I, I was confident, but um, there was just a little twinge of doubt because I've never done this before. Okay, so I've almost got this pared down to what I'm gonna keep. Oh, sorting meat, we're just sorting the last of the pork. We don't want as much of it as possible to go to waste. Um, some of it I really just don't know what to do with. I'm sure some of you do know what you would do with it, so you should tell me. Um, but anyway, I have all these bags of soup bones, and I put a little bit of meat in there, and I put some of the smoked skin in there to give whatever soup we make with it a really, really good flavor. And each soup will have some pork in it, some delicious broth from the bones. It'll be really good and some collagen from the skin, from the bones. It feels good that, I mean, like, I'm really thankful that we had the party and fed all of our friends. It was also kind of nice to have some of the pork here in our house after all of our hard work. So it's really nice. And then this last bowl is the head, which I'm about to put into this, so you can see the mouth there, into this giant pot. This is the lower part of the jaw here. So Arthur is determined to make some stock with this. Yep. And I'm just going to go through and pick out some of the other pieces we might want to throw in there, like a good piece of skin for the smoky flavor. And then the rest of this is mostly just fat and skin. Thank you. So some of you may think this is super weird, but I have friends who would be so blessed by receiving a bag of these bones. And so I'm really excited to give a couple away to friends. For our family to eat.